Hello everyone, let us welcome to today's session. Students, in this video, I would like to demonstrate the gaseous exchange at a tissue level. In the previous video, we have seen how the gaseous exchange occurs at the alveoli, we have seen right. Now, today in this video, I would like to explain the gases exchange at a tissue level. Now, let us see how gases exchange occurs at a, the tissue level. So, suppose here let me uh, say that 4 molecules of oxygen at a time can be carried by the hemoglobin. One molecule of hemoglobin can carries 4 molecules of oxygen at a time, is not it. Now, in the same way, if the same molecule enters into the tissues, if this HbO2 4 times enters into the tissues, immediately it will be splits into Hb plus 4O2 molecules, is not it. Now, immediately the hemoglobin combines with CO2 molecules which were produced in the cells and carried towards the alveoli with the help of blood. Now, the he hemoglobin carries carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide molecules in the form of bicarbonate ions. Now, as we know that when oxygen enters into the cells, immediately it will be taken by the mitochondria. As you know very well, what are mitochondria? Mitochondrions are called as powerhouses of the cells. Power houses of the cells, is not it? Why they call so powerhouse of the cells? Let us see. Here, the mitochondrions are specialized cell organelles, right? If you see carefully, the structure of mitochondria, it looks like this. It has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane. Now, if you see the outer membrane and this is inner membrane, right? Inner membrane has cristae and there is a matrix inside the cristae. So, there are some specialized enzymes present in the matrix of mitochondria who are responsible for the process of respiration in the cells. Inside the mitochondria generally cellular respiration occurs. Technically, how can you determine or define the cellular respiration? Now, if you see the mitochondria, if you carefully see the mitochondria, they takes oxygen and they splits C6H12O6 molecule that is called as a glucose into energy rich molecules called the ATP. As you know that adenosine triphosphate is a technical term which we can give for energy and energy produced by the mitochondria. Here uh, splitting of glucose molecule by mitochondria is called as glycolysis. As you know glyco means glucose, lysis means breakdown. So, breakdown of glucose into energy rich molecules is called as a glycolysis. The splitting of gly glucose molecule by mitochondria occurs in two different ways. Same mitochondria in the presence of oxygen it can split the glucose molecule into energy rich molecules. If mitochondria splits into or 
if mitochondria splits the glucose molecule in the presence of oxygen huge amount of energy will be produced along with some moisture and water same mitochondria if it is splits the glucose molecule if it is splitting glucose molecule by using carbon dioxide it leads to production of lactic acid or ethyl alcohol or ethanol what i am trying to say glucose molecule if it is splits in the presence of oxygen it leads to production of energy so splitting of glucose molecule by oxygen through mitochondria is nothing but the aerobic respiration why because here the oxygen was used for splitting glucose molecule whereas same glucose molecule with the help of carbon dioxide going to split into ethyl alcohol here carbon dioxide was used hence it is called as anaerobic respiration whether it is uh, anaerobic respiration or an aerobic respiration glucose is a common raw material which is used by the mitochondria for the production of products there are some outputs products produced by this mitochondria through aerobic uh, respiration and anaerobic respiration as we have seen uh, during aerobic respiration atp molecules are produced during anaerobic respiration the ethyl alcohol or ethanol or lactic acid is produced isn't it so if you see the typical structure of mitochondria it looks like this you can see in the figure the two membranes the outer membrane here this is called as outer membrane and you can see the inner membranes inner membranes or inner membrane now see the inner inner mitochondrial matrix contains enzymes helps in the process of the aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration during aerobic respiration huge amount of energy plus water molecules plus huge amount of energy water molecules going to produce in the aerobic respiration now during anaerobic respiration less amount of energy energy production also seen in the 
anaerobic respiration, but it is very less, less amount of energy plus CO2 molecules, little amount of water going to produce, uh, sorry water production could not happen in the um, glucose breakdown in the presence of carbon dioxide that is anaerobic respiration. So, by this how can you define the anaerobic respiration and the anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration which occurs in the presence of oxygen, anaerobic respiration which occurs in the presence of carbon dioxide right is not it. So, aerobic respiration completely depends upon oxygen whereas, anaerobic respiration completely depends upon carbon dioxide. So, during anaerobic respiration mitochondria gives less amount of energy water and uh, ethanol the byproducts. Whereas, during aerobic respiration energy plus water which are the end products of aerobic respiration. If you want to learn the equations, if you see uh, C 6 H 12 O 6 gives rise to in the presence of oxygen, if it is breakdown 6 CO 2 plus 12 water molecules plus energy production is seen uh, during aerobic respiration. Now, same equation C 6 H 12 O 6 in the presence of in the presence of carbon dioxide C 2 H 5 O H plus as you know that there will be carbon dioxide production and uh, little amount of energy will be produced in the anaerobic respiration. Simplified equations for uh, aerobic respiration and uh, anaerobic respirations. Clear students, this is about uh, the gases exchange at uh, the tissue level at the tissues from the tissues to the cells in the cells to the mitochondria. So, mitochondria break down the glucose molecule into the pyruvates. So, if they are pyruvates, pyruvates are nothing but the secondary products of glucose. Glucose later on break down into pyruvates in the glycolysis cycle. Clear students, this is about uh, the gases exchange at the tissue level which is very important concept. We will meet in the next session once again with one more uh, concept. Until stay tuned, have a nice day. Thank you.